All right, what's up? What's going on, guys? Captain Monk here. So in today's video, we're playing some Mordekaiser in the top lane, rocking that rework. The skin is pretty cool as well. We're rocking uh, Lord Mordekaiser. It used to be a little bit more metallic and purple. Now it's metallic and gold. Uh, kind of remind me almost of, uh, I think it's one of the King skins that he's got, one of the newer ones. But uh, the skin I really wanted to show you guys actually is the Dragon Knight one, because it used to be like red and like orange or gold but now it's like full-on dragon looking so it's super cool but it has a visual bug so i'll have to share that with you guys once the bug for the passive is fixed for now you're stuck with this one but this is still a really cool skin you can see the recall slamming his uh, hammer or his mace into the ground and creating a staircase down to the depths all right excellent Let's get ourselves here the Dorn Shield Potion Trinket to start. We are against a Silas in today's lane, and I'm definitely noticing it because I've played a few games of Mordekaiser that uh, the Dorn Shield is definitely the best starting item in most scenarios. You can get a Dark Seal nice and early and stack that up and get a lot of benefits, but in the first bit of the game, I think the Dorn Shield HP regen and HP is really important because you're going to be trading a lot since you are kind of short-ranged. You do have more range now with your E than you maybe used to, and it's kind of different spell entirely, and I'll explain how that all works. Uh, Q's definitely more range because before it was an auto attack buff. Now it's an actual uh, skill shot. So you definitely have more range there. But still, your Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser, just generally speaking, has short range. So it's nice to have uh, a little bit of extra safety for the early laning. So there's the key wrap the bat there. And Sal's going to try and hit our, his on us. But he's only going to hit one of the damage portions. Uh, not quite enough attack speed to get all those last hits. But I will hit the Q there. Besides the part of that, let's get some auto attacks in here. Uh, she made that wasn't the best auto attack trade to go for since it is Silas. He has those empowered autos. We are rocking Conqueror though, so if we keep the Conqueror up, we can trade pretty well, but we need to make sure we're actually keeping our Conqueror up. Important thing to know off the bat though, our passive does give us extra magic damage on hit, so that's why you'll see me every now and again actually trading with auto attacks, even though I think against Silas I still probably shouldn't too much when his passive auto attacks are available, but when those are down, we can still trade him. I just gotta keep my distance for the time being since he is level 2 to my level 1. But yeah, so our passive, after hitting three consecutive hits, doesn't have to be on the same target, but it has to be on champions. Cannot work on jungle monsters, unfortunately, so no jungle moored, unless they change that, which I really hope they do. We'll see what happens, though. But, uh, so that's your passive, and that will basically remind you kind of of your old W if you played Mordekaiser beforehand, since it is like the AoE with all the little shards in the air. And that also gives you move speed while you have that going. And it lasts quite a while as well. You will notice, though, the health... Uh, poke heavy Mordekaiser can be in a lot of cases, and that was so close to catching the Silas. I'm hoping to get level 3 here and try and trade with him while I have my shield, but he's not really giving me the best opportunity. We might have to set up ourselves. Oh, there's a good auto attack. Oh, that missed. Another thing to mention with the Q, you've kind of seen what it does by now, but what you might not know is if it only hits one target, it will actually do bonus damage, and that bonus damage scales with points in the spell. So at rank 1, it's only going to be 30% bonus damage, but it's going to rank up, I think, by 5% per rank. Let's see the exact. Uh, yes, it does go up by 5%. Yeah, 35 now. Excellent. So he pinged Udyr, so I think Udyr might be in the river just near me, so I'll be careful of that. I'm going to miss the tug there on this guy, but we can go ahead and just keep training with him here. Getting our W going for the shield, and our passive is just spinning all around us and doing lots of damage to this guy. And we have Conquerors, we can just keep going at this guy. Oh, the flash. There we go. We'll just flash on top of him here before he walks into tower. That'll work. We are rocking Ghost in today's game, and I think it's really good on Mordekaiser for the all-in once you have a good fight like that. But it's also really good with your ultimate because of how it will kind of bring you into what is called the Death Realm or the Shadow Realm, as I like to call it. Referencing Pegasus from uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know if you guys watched the early seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh, but if you did, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The guy with the golden eye and uh, Relinquished being his signature card. Anyway, this guy's going at me immediately. This is not good for any, me by any means, but my mini wave is big enough that I think I can farm this wave, get my passive going, and walk away. Excellent. So off the bat here, guys, if you guys are enjoying the game here so far, make sure to drop that radiant and support the video and the channel. I would really appreciate it. We're having a nice little start to the game here, and you can see that already off the bat, the Conqueror is actually doing quite a lot for us. 41 might not seem a lot, like a lot, but at almost 5 minutes, that's a ton. And the thing with this is that, like... Mordekaiser is just so good with Conqueror, and I want to kind of explain the whole rune setup and build and stuff, but for starting, because I think we're going to start snowballing, let's get ourselves here the Dark Seal, the Boots, and I think I'm going to get the Ruby Crystal here as well, just some extra, for some extra HP, just because uh, I'm not getting any other items for HP. Alright, so you have a good idea of how this works. Again, the passive auto attack boost at the very bottom there, and the extra uh, health damage and 5% move speed, which that 5% does scale with your level. You can kind of see how it's a little bit more bold white, so you know that's going to 
uh, scale with level. If it's if anything's ever in bold white, like really really thick white, that's because it's gonna scale with your level similar to right uh, here. You can see 21. That's gonna increase with level as well. So we don't have to build AP for our Q to do more damage as we level up. We can be really tanky and build tank stats and still do a lot of Q damage, which is pretty cool. All right, not farming amazingly so far this game. We're actually down a uh, whole, what is that, seven? So we have a little bit of catch-up to do, but one wave and we'll be back caught up if we get all seven. I'm gonna ping the missing though. And we are approaching level six here. And level six is really where things get interesting because uh, I haven't really detailed all of our spells just yet, but I'll skip past them for now to let you know again that the ultimate creates an area that they cannot escape. However, tower hits can still hit us if I bring them into that area, but there's no one else in this area. So just to show you exactly what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and go for it. He's literally trapped. He's got nowhere to go. Like this whole circle here, like he's, he's got nowhere to go. Gonna pop our shield here. Just keep going at this guy. And boom. Oh, I thought that would kill him. That's unfortunate. All right, so yeah, maybe use my ultimate ref to bat while he's still full health was a little bit overkill, but that gives you a very clear idea of how that works. And if we continue to go under tower there, while our, ultimate was, while our ultimate was still going, the tower hit would have hit us. But yeah, we ignore the minion waves. We uh, ignore champions. Oh, man, this guy's got jukes. Oops, but I can't seem to farm. I have ghosts in a few seconds. So I might just run them down with my uh, shield and my ghost. I just don't want to get bait under tower and die like a dummy. I'm kind of waiting for him to use his E for the shield. All right, some decent damage. He's got level 6 now, though, so he's got my ultimate. Alright, we got him. He kind of just ran it down. He made a huge mistake there. Can't really say much more about that one. Just hit the tug on him, and it's kind of game over. Excellent. Alright, I don't know I don't know where their jungler is, but at the end of the day, I'm up 5 CS. I'm getting some tower damage. I've got Ghost, so I might be able to run him. I've got plenty of shielding in my uh, passive shield. Which I guess is probably a good time to talk about my W now. You've kind of seen how be how I've used it a few times now, but uh, I'll kind of explain it now. Essentially, the shield that you used to have with Mordekaiser is no longer your passive, it's in your W. And it's the gauge that is white beneath our health bar, both here in the, you can see it depleting, but also here at the bottom. So that will fill up gradually as you deal damage. Uh, so it's really important to deal damage. And one, re one real unfortunate thing is I was trying in this tier to run overheal. But I found that wasn't very effective because to do damage, because you're short range, you're often going to have to take damage too. So you're not really going to get to a point where you're full health and have a shield and can like overheal uh, beyond having full health. So overheal is not really a great rune, although I did try it and I gave it a fair chance. I think triumph is better since we do want to get some extra money and some extra stats back after we win a fight. But uh, kind of coming back to uh, the, the W here. So yeah, we store 30% of all damage we deal as a potential shield, which is great. And then we can activate the shield. And while the shield exists, we can activate it a second time to actually consume 40% of its value as health. So we could just double W if we want to get health back. Or we can just press W, just use the shield and block damage. Which I usually prefer to do because you get more effectiveness out of that. Because you're going to lose a lot of value if you decide to turn it to HP. But the HP will last longer, of course. Now, I don't, know, I don't know where the Silas is at. Uh, I'm going to max E second here. I've been finding that's better since the W doesn't scale up the strength of your shield. What it rather does is strengthens the heal. And I find the heal is really often just not necessary. I find I can rely on other regen sources instead of that. So I much prefer to actually max the E because it gives you magic pen and it gives you extra damage and a lower cooldown on that spell as well. Oh, this guy getting tucked all around. Just gonna pop the shield here and just run at him. I don't think I even need to R. Uh, all right, well he's gonna use his R, which is actually mine. Huh? I mean, what are you gonna do here, man? I just walk at you. <laughs> I just let my passive burn him out. All right, I think one more tower shot might have killed me there, and I had no W just yet. So I'll use flash. Maybe unnecessary. Better safe than sorry on that one, I say. You can see the E becomes a pretty good wave clear tool at a certain point as well. All right, and now we can work on the tower, get some more tower plating. I was kind of considering running to Molish because I do find at a certain point you just shove, 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 shove as Mordekaiser. But I really like running Revitalize for extra healing and shielding. And I really like bone plating because with Mord, it's all about getting three hits in. And especially if you miss one skill shot, getting three auto attacks takes a while and you really need that. So I find having bone plating will allow me to survive much more easily against their first initial hits. So that I can get my passive going. Once I have my passive going, I just kind of instantly win. 
uh, other runes to mention, we have Tenacity. I think it's really good on Mordekaiser, so I can still use my spells, but it's definitely not necessary. I think it's just better than running Lifesteal or running um, the other option, which is Attack Speed. Attack Speed's not bad. It could be the second best one, if not uh, the best. I just really love Tenacity. I love being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I don't think you can beat me here, friend. I'm just going to try and see if I can all R this guy. Yes. So r him makes it so I can kill him, and we can maybe run away here. I still have cooldowns in two seconds. I just don't know if I want to use them, because I don't know if I want to tug in the Udyr. But I don't know, I kind of do. Oh, hold on. Oh, I can't reach. But we have uh, Karma showing up here. I'll pop my W here to make sure I don't die. And there we go, another kill coming through. That's red buff for me as well. Karma with the great roam there. Udyr getting kited. I'm not sure what gave me so much move speed, though. I guess I stole some uh, Silas's core stats, but what made me get so fast. That I don't know. Oops. Alright, this guy's really going ham here for Karma. I'm not sure why he's going so ham for her. He's not going to get her, but hey. You're lost, pal. Alright, we get ourselves the control ward. So now we are one fed Mordekaiser. Holy. And also at 11 minutes, having 300 damage on Conqueror. That's pretty big. And that's because of how many fights you're able to force and stick in. The biggest problem with Conqueror is it's really good on champions who uh, are fighters, but oftentimes fighters die early game. And Mordekaiser can definitely die early game. He's actually kind of vulnerable pre-6. I've definitely noticed that in a few matchups against like Renekton's, Darius, Aatrox, Irelia, Yasuo, anything that can kind of get in your face. But so once you get to level 6, you're pretty good to go because you just steal their stats and then win the 1v1. I'll spot the shield here so I don't take tower damage. Use my W again to get a little bit of sustain, but it's really not going to make a huge difference. One thing I'm definitely noticing about Mord, though, is I can stay in lane so long, and oh man, I think I just... <laughs> I just kind of did the opposite of what I should be doing <laughs> since I've been in lane for so long. I just ran it down. Holy crap, that was so dumb of me. But alright, we have Rylize now. Uh, I wouldn't recommend Rylize every single game. I'll definitely, though, explain why I think it's good this game. We're against champions that are really, really slippery. Silas, Udyr, Zoe, Lucian, Pike. Literally, their whole team is slippery. So making them less slippery is going to work to our best interest. I'm also going to work towards a, uh, ooh, this is a tough choice, actually. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Spell Pen Boots here, and then I'm going to get the Revolver. I want that extra burst with, uh, uh, Protobelt, and the Protobelt active that sprays out will actually trigger Rylize, so I'll be able to run down opponents very easily with that, especially with Ghost. I think Teleport's really good, but the lack of mobility this character presents makes Ghost really good, so you can run away from bad fights and run into good ones. I think that's really good to go with. I think Voidboy was recommending that in his video, so I'm kind of taking his word for it on that one. And wait, is Nocturne AFK? Uh-oh. I hope he's coming back. Oops, I put a Z in there. Wow, a Thresh triple kill. You don't see that every day. <laughs> Especially a support thresh. If it was 80 carry thresh, would be one thing. But like 80 carry thresh isn't really a thing to begin with. <laughs> oh, this guy's got my red buff now. I kind of want to just take this tower and then ghost and run at him. Yeah. If he comes anywhere close to me, like uses any spell. Alright, he's got my R now. I'm not sure I care though. Like, I think I still want to just keep farming. Wow, they went pretty deep for the Lucian there. Wait, this guy's approaching actually so far. Alright, drop the R. Where are you gonna go, pal? He's gonna R me too, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, once your shield is fully stacked up in your HP bar, just pop that full shield and just run him down with your passive. Alright, so we're in a 4v5 where we have four champions and they have five, but yet we're winning super hard. Hey man, Jin talks super loud with that skin. It's a great bug. And uh oh. Passive fully, or maybe not my passive, but my uh, shield. Oh, dodge the stun. And we're out. The passive is going to trigger the rift tail, but it's going to go the wrong way, so we're all set here. And I walked up, because I want to walk to my tower. Okay. That wasn't too bad for us. I think we play out the 4v5. Yeah, unfortunately, we we're missing our jungler, but we're winning, so we, we can probably just win the 4v5 outright. 
So other items to think about here are Leandries. They don't have many tanks, so it's not a huge priority to me, but it's really good with Rylai's if I can combine it even uh, if they don't have tanks. It's just not a rush unless they have tanks, right? I'll get it later. Uh, I think Rel Nomicon's my next item. And I think Zonny's Hourglass is up there too because they have a lot of AD assassins. Actually, that's not really the right terminology, but they have champions who are going to blow me up. So dodging the blow up would be good with the Hourglass. Yeah, Zoe, Pike, Lucian not as much, and I guess Udyr and Silas not as much either, but still. I'm going to try this with the Proto Belt, see if I can run this guy down. Oh, yeah. Look how much damage we do to this guy. <laughs> like, he actually gets obliterated so easily. Yeah, he's just so behind me at this point. Too many mistakes adding up. It's a non-stop uphill battle for him now. But yeah, the little bit of attack speed we're getting in our precision tree really goes such a long ways. It may not seem like it, because I'm missing farm left and right. But if I wasn't, I would have such slow attack speed, I'd still be missing a lot. But yeah, I can protobelt in a few moments here again, and then ult him. The thing is, though, I'm getting kind of sick of just ulting the Silas. Like, I'm not really getting much benefit from killing him over and over again. I really want to kill other champions. I mean, you flashed, but <laughs> it's not really going to save you there, friendo. Oh my god. <laughs> that Q damage when they're isolated is absolutely bonkers. Alright, looks like my team's getting kind of zerged here, but... Oh, nah, Thresh will go down. That's unfortunate. I mean, I'm getting a lot of damage with this turret, and this is something I want to talk about with, like, Mordekaiser's playstyle. Because of his lack of mobility, and his really good pushing power, and his ability to take on 2v1s with his ultimate, I think he's a really good split pusher. Because if you're ever going to get in a situation where there's going to be a lot of them, and you can't handle them all, just R one of them, and just handle that, and then move forward. Makes him really good at handling multiple targets. And he does pretty decent damage to towers, especially if you take to Demolish, which I'm not taking. I think the Bone Plating is doing really good for me, so I'm going to stick with that. But I could see Demolish being really good. Oh, I wanted that guy. Guess I can't get him. Anyways, I pop Ghost, probably just for safety at this point. Uh-oh. Their team is definitely after me on this one. If they can slow down the chase, I think I live. Nah, I'm going to die now, because I got hit by sleep. Yeah. Oh, almost hitting the hook. Yeah, I should have ran this way, but if I ran this way, I'd also be running towards this wall where Zoe can easily hit her bubble. So running up the river was good because it gave her no walls until I got to here. And at this point, it was just unfortunately too late. I had very little room to dodge. And this Silas, <laughs> consistently making mistakes. Unfortunate. All right, uh, sell this. We're gonna get the Morellonomicon here. The spell pen's really good from this item, the magic pen. I think at this point, I'm gonna start group with my team pretty soon, especially since there's an Infernal Dragon on the map. I'm surprised no one's taken that yet. Yeah, definitely good for me to get that because uh, as Mordekaiser... Oh, their team just got it. That's so unlucky. Yeah, but AP damage is really good for Mordekaiser. Uh, usually, just generally speaking, Infernal is going to scale better for AP champions than AD just because you have more total AP. However, because we have a Jin, uh, that's kind of an exception because of the way his AD scales. So, yeah, the Infernal would have been really good for us. Unfortunate. Oh, Jin got him. Nice. I'm just gonna get Rift-tailed here before it despawns. And that 469, that's a lot of damage. It's a juicy number, too. Hey, man, our passive's doing so much damage. I didn't realize our passive would actually hit large monsters like this. So it says against champions. I thought it didn't work against large monsters. I wish they would make it so it would work against... Uh, like blue buff and red buff so you could actually jungle Mordekaiser. I mean, I'll, I'll settle for Rift Herald and Baron, but it'd be pretty sweet if you could do more. Anyway, if I hit the Protobolt, this guy's dead. I was going to make sure I hit him and not just the wave. Yeah, he's just dead now. Boop. Got him. I like how my team's, like, standing by as if they're ready to help, but, like, they just, they can't help me. It's not, like, a possibility for them. Uh, looks like there might be a fight there pretty soon, but for now, I'm just gonna push. All 
All right, now what I think I might want to do here, because I have Ghost in 20 seconds, is flank the fight while leaving my Rift Herald to push top lane. But at the same time, this Lucian's in a curious position. I wonder if he's going to pass me by. Hello. <laughs> this guy walked right into my grasp. Uh, I think he could have dashed to the side of my E, but once the E hit, it was just over. All right, Rift Shield, help me out with that one. Oh, oh, Silas almost got you again there. Oh, 2v1. I mean, I got Rift Herald. Let's go for it. Got my shield on. I pop the ghost so I can just run around these guys in a favorable fashion. Oh, if I kill the Silas first, I think this fight gets easier. Yep. Oh, and Udyr. I'm sorry, Bubba. You're going straight down for the count as well. All right, probably got rid of the Rift Herald, unfortunately, but we're still in a position to siege here. Let's hope my shield so I don't get hit by the uh, power shot. Wait. Oh, good damage. I think we just steal their red at this point. Because I think uh, Jin can handle that. But if I step up to that tower, one of them can easily pick me. Probably not using the W most effectively there, but that's okay. Somehow I feel like Mordekaiser's Q is supposed to have two damage procs. One from landing and one from just exploding on the floor afterwards, kind of like Poppy. But I know that's not what it does, but it just feels like it's supposed to. That's not a complaint, just really just an observation through the playstyle. This is a really good back for me, by the way. I'm managing to get not only a Morel Namicon, but also a uh, Haunting Guys. I think Haunting Guys is really good. And I'm realizing now with this build that I'm not really going to have room for a uh, Lian uh, sorry, not Leandries, an Hourglass. But I probably will if I sell the Dark Seal. I don't think getting Magi's is in my best interest. All right, I'm just going to grab... Actually, I'm not going to grab it. I already have one. I'm just going to try and find a way to run at these two. I think I should be able to make it happen. Oh. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's just so over for the Zoe now. I don't have to do anything else. I just walk at her. That's all delusion. <laughs> I'm so amused by this, even though I'm actually, like, griefing super hard trying to kill this guy. Alright, our passive just gets him while I can't even see him. But yeah, I missed a lot of skill shots there, no doubt. Can we get this guy? Ooh, probably not. Alright. Wait. Oh, if I got him with that. Alright, 14, 2, and 0. <laughs> no assists. <laughs> Mordekaiser leaves no room for assisting others. If there's any question that he won't get the kill, he just brings them to the Shadow Realm or the uh, Death Realm. Oh, hold on. Boom. Oh. I think I can still do this. Nah, he's out of, right, out of my range. Yeah, I was really hoping Thresh would hit that hook because he knew where Zoe was going to end up. Oh my god, that's half his HP just like that. Oh my goodness. We're just gonna go at these fools. Come at me. Wait, where'd Pike go? He must have gone pretty far. Oh. Oh, I get it. Silas stole my ult and then brought somebody else to the Shadow Realm. I was so confused, like, why we were standing around like that. Okay. So I got a few assists. I really thought I was going to run at them, just like go and kill them all, but it's not really how it went down. All right, getting hit by that sucks, but I'll stand really far back. Uh, I kind of just want to go back to Dragon even. I'm kind of low on sustain here. Low on HP. I like how we're actually like genuinely stomping A4v5. You don't see that too often. At a certain point, the 45s definitely going to come into their team's favor because we're just going to, you know, fall off from being all full build and they're all going to be full build, but they have five champions, we have four. But when we are ahead in builds like this, because most of our team's really fed, it's just really hard for us to lose this stage. Jin with the dragon chaos. All right, I can respect it. I'm really close to Leandri's though, and I kind of want to get that. I'm going to go bottom. So I'm pretty sure Jin's got a bug right now where everyone hears his quotes, because I'm hearing Mordekaiser's too, but I'm hearing Jin's at like full volume. PB bugs. Alright, 
Alright, got ourselves Leandries. That's gonna really help out our damage output, because when we have the Rylai surrounding us and burning them down, the Leandries is also gonna burn them down and shred their HP for percentage HP damage. It's also a beautiful looking blue build. Definitely like this. So I'm gonna try and go bottom lane. Wait, are they doing Baron? Nah, they're not gonna do Baron. I'm gonna go bottom lane though. I realize this might be like slightly griefing because our team is playing a 4v5 and they're actually getting caught at Baron as we speak. But I kind of want to see if I can A, get them to like have a chance in this game by giving them Baron, which sounds again like griefing. But I think I'm gonna push bottom lane and probably at some point take on like multiple people on their team. And I just want to see how we fare because at this point in the game, like I can probably take on most of their team unless they're under towers. And I think if I bring them this way, they're gonna try and take me all on. Then again, our team's just gonna win. So there's also that. Yeah, this team we're playing against isn't the best opposition by any means. I think they're making quite a few mistakes and that looks buggy as hell. It's got a uh, blue buff and I really want it, so. Let's go ahead and trap him. Missed the Q, but our passive just burns him out. There's just no chance. I love how Mordekaiser just traps him like that, man. It's just so funny. There's just literally no escape. Oh, didn't miss the siege. Excellent. Yeah, maybe my sieging power isn't really that great, though, when it comes to actually hitting the towers, unless I have, uh... Oh, got the Zoe. That's some damage. Holy shit. Reshot her in a heartbeat. Oh. Alright, Pike coming through. Oh, nice. I thought he was going to escape over the wall. Alright, just Lucian standing, but Udyr's back up in a moment here. Oh, he's getting tugged around. Got my shield on. Where's my passive at? Here he goes. Boom. Alright, Lucian. I think I can tug him out. Oh, I missed. Oh, but Karma didn't. Oh, wow. That Jin shot was fat. Holy. Alright, well, there you have it. Uh, or do you? The whole team's coming at us now. One last brawl. Oh, wait, there's two of them in the Saddle Realm. The Silas brought one of them. Well, I can actually see their, their ghosts. I didn't realize that's how that worked. You can see like a little red and a little blue to kind of show you where their uh, their spirits are at. Anyway, so that's the game here, guys. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to drop that like right here. It really helps the channel out a lot, and I would really appreciate it. And let's check out those post-game stats. All right, so when it comes to graphs, yeah, we did the most damage. Jin did second. Karma did third. So our team just had three hyper carries. Their Zoe did some stuff. But the rest of the team really didn't do anything at all. And that's unfortunate. Our Thresh even competed in damage with their jungler. Yikes. Yeah, and Nocturne wasn't here, but hey, 4v5s happen, and sometimes they can be won. Uh, it was a custom, of course, because the rework just came out, so playing Normals Draft equates to 30 minutes of sitting there, re -queuing and re and re in because people dodge and take Mordekaiser, and then you can't play Mordekaiser, and there's just so many reasons why that doesn't work, so here we are in a custom, playing against fans who actually were trying, but I guess, I don't, I guess the teams weren't exactly even, but that's okay. Thanks, guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.